Hello, my friends, and uh, what is it, Friday? TGIF. <laughs> uh, vlog number 394. Getting close to that old 400 number. Not that that's significant, just, just a fact. You know, I thought I'd just start off with that tune again and give you all one more chance, and I thought I'd give you one more clue. <laughs> if, uh, you know, you're... you're Chances of winning this are pretty slim, but if you do win it and, and you're not a musician and you would rather just have a CD or something, I'll send you a CD or a pack of strings or something like that if you'd rather have that than this. So, uh, and again, it's got more parts to it too. But anyway, um, partly just because I like to play this too. <laughs> again, it's in A minor. I can't do nothing anymore. I'm trying to do that. Almost did it. Um, all right. So the clues are it's a girl's name. I finished it on the... Uh, I mean, like, that was the very first... Not only the first... I mean, it wasn't just the fact that I wrote this song on, on the her mandolin the day I finished it. I am not exaggerating when I tell you this. I picked up the mandolin and just started noodling, and that's what came out. I mean, it was the first thing I played on that new mandolin. So I thought, well, heck, it's her mandolin. I got to name it after her. So I just named it her name. Now, I, I, I told you if you got the first name, I'd probably give it to you. So I'll just go ahead and give you the last name. <laughs> and see if anybody gets it. And again, it'll be the first one that I see in the list, if there is anybody that gets it. Her last name was Vaughn. And I've mentioned her name a few times before, but the last name is Vaughn. So, anyway. <laughs> uh, I had a few metal detector finds yesterday, and uh, nothing... Nothing good, really. <laughs> just a few things. But I just thought you might get a kick out of seeing where I'm at and what I'm doing. And uh, you get a look at Sadie also, because she th thought she had to get involved. <laughs> well, my friends, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. Almost halfway back on the property. And I'm getting a signal right in here that is a deep signal. You can see the numbers and they're not consistent and if you look at this these bars going down that tells you that it's deep so my guess is it's a piece of farm machinery that's way down there but it's consistent enough that I'm going to dig it because you never know what it is but it's going to be way down there it's probably going to be you know, 18 inches deep or, or deeper, unless it's something unusual. So here we go. Well, uh, Sadie thinks she's helping, but this is it, I believe. It's a piece of lead. It wasn't real deep, maybe 10 inches deep or so. And look at Sadie. She thinks she's going to dig out whatever's in there. But uh, anyway, uh, nothing to 
care about, but, you know, stuff you just find out in the middle of your fields. I don't know what that piece of lead is, but it looks like it might have been something to do with a seal or a bearing or something like that, some sort of a crammed in a, you know, around an axle or something. I mean, it's what it kind of looks like. I don't know if that's what it was. Just kind of looks like something like that to me, partially round. Um, I found a few other things, and I'll kind of take them in reverse order as to importance. So here's the least important. Although it's, it's a curious thing to me because I don't know what this is. It's, sure, it's a bullet. I know that. It's a casing, a brass casing. But when I look at the numbers on the back, it's got LC and then a 91. And that's all it's got. It's a tiny bullet. I thought it was maybe a 17 caliber or something like that, but when you measure it, it measures over 200. So it doesn't, doesn't quite measure up to 243 or anything, and it doesn't really measure to a 223. It measures in between there, actually, is what it measures, but I don't know what it is. I'm just curious if anybody would happen to know what that is. LC, and then it says 91 on the bottom. Usually they tell you your caliber on there, but I have no idea what this is. It's a tiny little shell, really. Um, and I just, for the record, what I do with these, I pick them up and I put them in a, just a box or something, and I get a whole bunch of these. I plan to melt them down and, and pour them into a bar that I can use to turn parts out of on my metal lathe. That's the plan. Will that work? I don't know. Uh, here's the next thing that's probably at least important because I don't know what it is, I, although I have a good feeling of what it might be. Again, this is, I'm pretty sure it's lead, and you can see the white patina on it. That's why I think it's lead, because of that patina. And it's probably really old, but I thought it could be, you know, because of that hole, I thought it might have been for a lead-headed nail, um, though all the lead-headed nails I've ever seen actually go all the way around the nail, but this could have been broken off from that, I guess, but it looks more like a smooth washer is what it looks like, but it's lead. Again, of no significance. This one was a little bit better. I, when I first found this, I didn't think much of it. I just thought, oh, it was just a piece of junk, you know, but then when I started cleaning it up, it's brass, I think, I didn't actually test that. I could test it with a magnet, I guess. In fact, it almost looks like it's more like a metal than a brass. Yeah, it is actually magnetic. It's not brass. So it is metal uh, of some sort. But what's weird about it is that it's full of wood. It's, it's got, and you can see a little uh, rivet like that went through the wood. So it held something together. There's no threads in here. So on this other end, I thought, I kind of thought it might have been an early shotgun cleaning kit, part of a shotgun cleaning kit with, I thought maybe it was brass, but now that it's metal, I doubt it's a shotgun cleaning kit thing. So I don't know what it is, something old and unique, but the, the curious part was that it's got wood in it, you know. Anyway, and then the last thing, which was the best thing, and it's still not real great, <laughs> But, potentially, the last guy that touched this could have been involved in the Civil War. Potentially. And it's a, uh, you know, a round musket ball type thing. Um, the, the curious thing about this one is it looks really old just by the patina it has, but it doesn't have the white patina, which usually you see on the really old lead. Like that other piece there had the white so I don't know if it's that old or not, but I guess it could be. I mean, anyway, it's a re definitely a, a lead ball. Um, then, I, you know, I took Sadie walking around and, and driving around looking for antler again. And we did not find any deer antler. Sadie's doing pretty good still. She's still doing what I asked her to do, or at least trying and trying to figure it out. And she's doing pretty good. Um, but I did find this. I only show it to just say, to make a point that I find these everywhere on the farm. And you can tell it's a, it's an old, uh, balloon of some sort. These, especially these metallic type balloons. 
We find them on the farm. I bet I find one, two, maybe three per year. And I've had the farm for 25 years. Sue finds a few too. I don't, I'm not even counting hers. And uh, so you stop and think about that. We got 280 acres and let's just be conservative and say we found 25 in 25 years. Uh, just think of how many of those things are out there in the world. Uh, and how, you know, I've, that's just 280 acres. Think of the millions of other acres out there, millions of how many of those balloons are out there. So my suggestion is don't turn them loose. I mean, it's not that big a deal uh, in terms of affecting the environment in one regard, but in another regard, it is. Um, you know, animals can ingest that and have a problem. Uh, they can literally get it stuck over their head and have a problem and you know, run into a tree and break their neck. You know, I mean, anything can happen. So I just point it out as a public service announcement. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a Mr. Goody Two Shoes that never causes a problem. You know, I understand things happen, but just as a point of reference, if if you have an option of turning them loose or hanging on to them, just hang on to them. <laughs> uh, cedar video. I cut some more cedar yesterday. Here's a short video video on that. Just thought I'd show you that the little guard I put on here uh, it protects this rail about ninety percent. Uh, maybe 95%. It does a pretty good job. I think I will put a little bit more of a cover on it, and then I really shouldn't have any problem with uh, sawdust buildup at all. I saw it another log yesterday. It was fairly a uh, big log compared to the previous one. It was like a 12 inch or so, but I got the same amount of finished lumber out of it. I got eight uh, uh, one by sixes. Actually, these are even a hair narrower than the six, so I actually got less wood out of a bigger log, but that was mostly because there was so much uh, inconsistency in the edges of the log. So I got a lot more wane type lumber out of it. Like here's a piece that's almost a good piece all the way up, but it's not. So I can cut that down to a four or five inch board, but there was a lot of wane in that particular log. I do have a large cedar log right here. It's really a, not much bigger than the one I cut yesterday. And when I say a foot across, that one's barely a foot across. So the other one probably wasn't as big as I thought. Well, anyway, I'm slowly getting some lumber cut. Uh, <clears throat> I've got several more little logs to mess with. And a couple of those are way too small to cut. I don't even know why I got them piled there. But anyway, I got... Um, couple more logs to cut and then I might start messing with those stumps and get those things cut up uh, you know those walnut stumps have been laying out there for a year I guess I don't know how long they've been laying out there now but it's been a while so I want to get those cut up too I still have lots of rocks in them and I'm still worried about that um, another thing that I'm anxious to try is one of the blades that I've resharpened I haven't tried one of those yet and uh, I think that's going to be interesting to see how well that sharpener that I made uh, works or converted to a sawmill band sawmill sharpener. Anyway, it uh, I'm just anxious to try that. Um, I think that's everything I was going to cover this morning, so let's just look through the comments. Donald Matthews was the first one on there this morning. Good morning, all uh, scouts in a BSA troop. I work with our bringing Martin backpackers to camp this summer. Can they use Howard feed and wax wood polish on them for protection? Um, I, I don't know that brand. I don't know it, but uh, assuming that it's just a paste wax type stuff, it would probably be just fine as long as it's a paste wax type thing. I, that's what I recommend rather than the chemical spray type polishes. If that's, a, if that's one of those spray polishes, I wouldn't recommend it because uh, they got too many chemicals in them. And they, not that it would hurt on that type of guitar. Um, I don't even know if those have pick guards, do they? But, the, but what happens with uh, the spray type polishes and, and that is the chemicals in there will curl your pick guards up. Um, so anyway, Carolyn Fike was second in line. John Pepper was right after that. And then Kenneth Ennis, I made it looking... I made it. Looking forward to your 
program. Keep chirping. <laughs> Happy Groundhog Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I saw that. I, I saw a, a clip on YouTube about, what is it, Puxatani Phil or whatever his name is, something similar to that. And uh, I didn't watch it. I should have watched it, I guess. And there's Bill from England and then Gary Smythe from the UK tried today to be number one, but found that position had already been or is already gone. I'll try again another day and keep on. T- <laughs> uh, well, see, Rod's way down the list today. Boy, Rod, you must have slept in. <laughs> well, see, now wasn't it Dottie or was it Carolyn that asked for him to sleep in? So, you know, you had your chance there, girls. <laughs> Uh, Daddy says, just popped up. I've been waiting since 8.15. Hmm, I'll be done. Um, Oh, Daddy says she won't be here Monday. I have to have an operation. Eh, Well, I'll say a prayer for you, Daddy. I hope it works out really well. Um... Looking for question marks mainly, but so yeah, I didn't put this one out there until right about seven thirty my time. So it it was a little later getting out there. I, once again, I, I would I usually depend on my alarm to tell me to get ready, and the alarm didn't go off on my little pad, and I I was watching. I was already awake, but I was wasn't paying attention to the time. And uh, the alarm didn't go off, and I noticed it was 7 o'clock already. <laughs> I thought, well, doggone it. <sighs> Somehow or another, it got turned off this time. The other time, I don't know what happened. Blair Turner, hi from Calgary. You must have to go to the dark web to be the first to <laughs> log into the Rosa Live chat. <laughs> That's funny. Let's see. Carolyn Fike, looks like the weather app on my phone missed it. Sun out now, six weeks more winter. Hmm. Um, so is today Groundhog Day? I, I, I was thinking it was yesterday for some reason. I thought it was February 1st, but it's February 2nd. Okay. I don't know. I can't keep it straight. Um, let's see. Turtle, turtle or... Again, I'm probably butchering that. Ben Boyd must have been bored yesterday. I saw him on Facebook, Martin Guitar Owners page, reminding everyone about what you have to say about humidity. Well, <coughs> you're gonna stick. You're gonna get your neck cut off because everybody disagrees. So, y'all do what you want with the humidity thing. But I, I'm just telling you, it's more of a myth than it is a reality, and I and I know that for sure. Uh, I know it for sure. It's not a guess. Moving on. Uh, Dottie Hildebrand. Jerry, how could I get that national number willing to pay for it? Uh, You should be able to download it right off of the website. I don't know. I I don't sell it individually or anything. I mean, it's all one big package, so I don't know. Um... Paul Lanier, Donald Matthews on BC Scouting. Look and read here. Oh, he says get the carbon fiber or whatever. Best money I've ever spent. Okay, well, that's probably good for outdoor. That's true. Of course, those little backpacker guitars, that's what they're made for. They they make them pretty solid and you just kind of drag them around. Uh, Dottie Hillbrand, I'm learning the banjo, so I guess I need to learn the national numbers. Um, <clears throat> does anybody truly learn banjo? <laughs> Another banjo joke. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, poor Dottie, you, you know you're setting yourself up for all kinds of harassment, especially if you're around bluegrassers. <laughs> uh, Papa Tom, my profile picture is a squirrel playing my Martin chirp. <laughs> okay. Um, again, I can't see it, but I'll just take your word for it. Um, Jeff Puris says, I ordered Jerry's Nashville number course, 
my iPad wouldn't download and open it, possibly operator error. I use my laptop. You can opt for mandolin or guitar. Okay, well, if, if at any time, and, and it's happened, and again, I'm behind on my email, so there could be people out there complaining right now, and I apologize if that's the case. But if you at any time you don't get what you pay for, send me an email, and I, eventually I'll get back to you. I'm sorry. I, I, you don't have to worry. You'll get your money back, or you'll get the product, one of the two. Um, yeah. I should check the emails better. I really should. Papa Tom played lead guitar in clubs over 20 years, mostly 50s, 60s, rock country. Uh, we used the number system, not knowing it was Nashville numbers, 145, or cheesy slow songs, 1645. Six was a minor. Yeah, your six is, is generally a minor. Um, your two can be a minor. So, like, if you're looking for a minor, like, if you hear a minor in the song, the first one you should look for is a six. If it's not the six, then the second one you should look for is a two. And if it's not the two, then the third one is a, um, a three. And again, those are, if you want to call that a rule, that's a rule in the Nashville number system, the way I designed it. Um, I, you know, the, my training, I'm talking about the way I designed my training, is that these are just helpful things to help you figure out music. Um, it just it just helps, and if it's if it turns out it's not one of those three, well then it could be anything, and you just have to keep trying till you find it. But generally speaking, most of your minors are sixes, the second most minors are twos, and the third most minors are threes. For the most part, that's pretty true. You'll find it to be true if you start checking it out. <clears throat> Would a guitar player benefit from your course? Well, I do have a guitar version of the Nashville number system, but it's much more watered down. Um, it, it, it assumes that you already know how to play the guitar and you know most of the chords. Now, if you were, let me try to explain this. You know, in the Nashville number system, the way I teach it on mandolin, I teach you really just one chord position. You actually put it in two places, and there is a slight alternation because at one point, like, if you start on what I call the bottom two strings, then you can put all four fingers on the strings. If you move up to the middle two strings with these two fingers, well, then this finger has no place to go. The bottom string's open. So it's the same chord. It's just that it's slightly different because of the fact that you're moving it from the bottom up to the middle Anyway, the point is that I teach it with just one chord. So the reason I bring that up as an important thing is if you know bar chords on a guitar, then you can essentially do the exact same thing I do on the mandolin, and uh, it'll make the Nashville number system uh, even be quicker to learn on the guitar. But anyway, just... I don't show bar chords in my Nashville number system training, just so you know. I don't show it. I tell you how to, how to understand it, but I don't show bar chords. But if you did know bar chords, you could even make it quicker to understand it. And quicker, uh, you would start to see the patterns faster, I think. Anyway, uh, so a guitar player definitely can benefit from it. I just don't, I don't make the same claims on my guitar training as I do on my mandolin training. Um, at least you would start to understand the Nashville number system, though. <clears throat> uh, John Warren, happy Groundhog Day. Aletha Chris, still dark out here in Battleground, Washington. Good morning. So what is going on this morning? My chickens aren't even up yet. <laughs> it's just me and my kitten, Phoebe. Uh, they're daring to be up. Yeah, well, the time is changing. It's getting lighter here in the morning. Now I can tell again. It's starting to be a little lighter each morning. Uh, there's Christia Thomason, and then there's Gabe says, What were some of your favorite TV shows back in the day? Oh, you guys are be bored sick on mine because mine are all the serpy little perfect mom and dad shows, you know, like Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> I love that. I loved. Uh, I loved Bewitched. Um, I I don't know. I'm trying to think. Uh, Fury, you know. Um, 
uh, I don't know. There, any show like that, you know, that was what I was into. I liked them all. It's a shame we don't have more shows like that these days, I think. Uh, most of the shows these days that are supposed to be kid shows, you kind of wonder if you should let a kid watch them. You know, on some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, Olaf Serlin Hansen, what single one of your Legion of Achievements are you the most proud of? Um, I guess teaching young people how to play music, probably. Um, I've had some real, real nice big successes with that. And uh, I feel like that's probably the best thing I've done. I mean, building instruments for people and stuff is pretty cool, but... and and. To some degree, that'll be more my legacy than the other because, theoretically at least, some of my instruments will be around in another two or three hundred years, you know, if people take care of them. Um, <clears throat> so I guess, but, but if, if you ask me what I'm the most proud of, it would probably be training young people how to play music. Carolyn... Oh, okay, these are guesses on the name. We got Emily and uh, Elizabeth and uh, Sally and Mary. And, and I say, no. <laughs> Clyde Price, good luck with your surgery, Dottie. Okay, yeah, well, that's always nice to see. Let me see here. Paul Lanier has a question. Maybe the lead was part of an old... Babbitt machine. That's yeah. That's kind of what I had in my head. It was something to do with a Babbitt bearing type thing, possibly from an old hit hitch, maybe. Uh, and oh, hit and miss engine. I've also thought of sawmill Babbitt bearing. Yeah, it's possible. Anything like that, I would think it's probably pretty old. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what it was for. Let's see here. Papa Tom book title: Pucker Up Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a luthier? <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like that. That's good. That's really good. I like that a lot. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I don't know if I can carry on now. That's really funny. <laughs> Chuck Hyde Predator. Your, your find was part of a bearing. It would be made of Babbitt. Well, yeah, it's hard to tell Babbitt from lead, though. Uh, I mean, it just looks like lead to me, but in Babbitt, kind of has the same kind of consistency. Your test, it like you do tone wood, it will ring slightly. Pure lead is dead on the tone. Yeah, well, that little piece, I doubt, is going to ring at all. But if you had a big enough piece, you could, I'm sure. Um, Peter Lubbock, hello, Peter from Germany. There, and let's see, Papa Tom says, foil balloons are dangerous when they hit power lines. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all. Mark says, the bullet was made in 91. Well, maybe that maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But it's a really weird little bullet. I thought it was a 17 caliber, but it's not quite that small. And it's not a 243, and it don't look like a 223 either, because I, you know... Uh, I've got, well, JR has a 223, so I've seen those bullets. It just looks like a really weird bullet to me. I've never seen one quite like it. Uh, Ronald Todd, Let's Dig 18 YouTube channel says he finds those balloons on every project he does. Yeah, I don't doubt it. They're, they're everywhere. They really are. And you stop and think about it. Did I find all of them? I doubt it. You know, I don't walk my whole 280 acres. Uh, in fact, I probably walk very little of it when you get right down to it. Um, so the ones I find are fairly obvious right out in the middle of nowhere, you know. right, Just right wherever I'm at at that time, you know, I don't walk everything. Jackie Farmer, uh, is her name Julie Vaughn? <sighs> You're getting warmer. <laughs> Uh, it's not it, though. Um, John Dobermick, did you see a groundhog? Uh, I, no. <laughs> uh, Ronald Todd, Howard Feed and Wax is a thick liquid made from beeswax and mineral oil. Eh, that'd probably be okay. Um, <clears throat> that'd probably be okay. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> oh, Bill Carter's being funny there. He put Happy Groundhog Day like four or five times in a row, <laughs> like the movie Groundhog Day. <clears throat> D.E. says, I'm late, but I'm here. Mike Bennett, hello from Winter Park. And then there's Ben Boyd. Any thoughts on guitar top torf, tor, torfication or whatever that is? Uh, I don't know, Ben. I, I never messed with it. And so many things, and, and I'm not saying this is, but I'm just saying so many things, so many things are just gimmicks and marketing hype and all that crud, I suspect that it's probably more marketing hype than anything. But there, but you'd be hard-pressed to convince some people of that because some people instantly grab a hold of something like that and just in their mind, it's always way better, you know. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to talk bad against it. I'm not trying to talk good against it. I'm just trying to get you to see both sides of it. It could be great. I don't know. I don't have any experience with it. So I have no reason to, I should not even comment on it. However, I just make the comment because I see this all the time is the marketing hype part of it. And it just hits everything. It, it hits more than just musical instruments, as you know. There's so much hype attached to everything anymore to sell everything. And um, maybe it's better. Maybe it is. I don't know. I can't answer the question. But I just pose the, the, I pose the situation that it could just be a bunch of marketing hype. Robert Hurst, <clears throat> if there is a thin gap between the neck and body of the guitar, does that mean the neck needs to be reset or can you glue and clamp it back? Well, generally, Robert, if it's got a gap in there, I, generally then you can usually see it move to some degree. Maybe it's very minimal, but if you can see it moving, the, it's definitely loose and it probably definitely needs to be reset. If it doesn't move at all, I don't know, I'd probably just keep my eye on it and it, you know, as long as your as long as your action hasn't gotten crazy bad because usually when there's a gap, the neck I'm, I'm exaggerating, but the neck starts doing this, well then the strings are going across here and there's a huge gap between your strings and your neck. So, you know, if you've got that problem, then more than likely your neck's loose and you probably need to have it reset. It's it's hard to say any one thing black and white with anything on an instrument. Everything, every one of them is unique to some degree, and every one of them needs some additional attention that the other one doesn't need. You know, that kind of thing. So it's hard to say just based on what you're telling me whether it needs it or not, but I'd probably be leaning toward it probably does, but then again, I don't know. I've seen them, I've seen them with cracks that... They're perfectly fine. You know, they're just okay. It's just the way they're either they we're made that way or or it's just somehow opened up and it didn't seem to create a problem, you know. Papa Tom, thank you. Always used bar chords. Probably how we saw a number system on the frets. Okay, good. Uh, Thomas, Tommy, is, uh, is her name Rose? Nope. Sarah, nope. <laughs> 2250, perhaps. Well, I'm not familiar with a 2250, uh, but I think their casing is bigger than that, I think. But I don't know that for sure either. Um, oh, Turtley says, June Vaughn. You're warm. Judith is warm. Juliet is warm. <laughs> Uh, when I get to the last comment, I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> I didn't expect anybody to get it, honestly. I didn't. We'll give this away on something else one of these days. <clears throat> Olav Serland Hansen. Uh, I, yeah, he's talking some French there. <laughs> Bill Webb. Jerry's training will also work for bass guitar. Not so much chords, but the patterns. Wa uh, wavy, Ray, you, and, I, and I have to say, you couldn't prove that by me because I don't know much about bass guitar. So, uh, Daddy Hildebrandt, farmers hate those balloons, tear up farm equipment. Um, Jackie Farmer is 
it's Susie Vaughn. Nope, but Susie's my wife. <laughs> or Sue is. She doesn't like to be called Susie. <laughs> Bill Shell. Good morning, Jerry. I love your video, but I miss the ones of you working on guitars. Well, thank you. But yeah, you know, all good things come to an end, and it has. And Kay Williams. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't give it to you because she never went by Jennifer. She went by Jenny, Jenny Vaughn. So that's the name of the song. It's called Jenny Vaughn. Well, Kay Williams, do you want this? If you do, send me an email with your shipping address and I'll ship it out to you. Um, if you don't want this and you'd prefer to have a CD or a, or a set of strings, um, just tell me your preference. And if you want strings, then at least give me some idea what you're playing. <laughs> Tim Trimble. Is it Lucia? Nope, we're done. <laughs> Is it Josephine? Nope. <laughs> um, Jolene? Nope. Uh, Russ Beston. Jerry, why, uh, why don't you try the small mics that the journalists use? Uh, well, I guess pop, maybe because I don't know what they are. Um, but I mean, if you're talking about like the lapel mics or something, and eh, that won't work for what we're doing. We, <clears throat> you kind of need a large diaphragm mic to pick up all your instruments. And see, again, guys, you have to understand, I absolutely black and white, 100% know how to solve the problem. I know how. There's no doubt about it. I know how to do it. There's no doubt. I don't want to solve it that way. I don't want to put boards in here and I don't want to have, you know, a, a mixing board and I don't want to have, you know, amps and all kinds of junk. I could do that and I can make it work. I don't want to do that. I want one mic plugged into my computer and I want to make it work. That's what I want. And unless you know how to do that, then you know, any suggestion you make beyond that isn't really going to help me because that's all I'm looking for. I, and it, I mean, I know how to solve it the hard way. I want to solve it the easy way. And, uh, and I don't really expect, and I'm not expecting it to be perfect. You know, I know that it's not going to be perfect. But the thing is, I don't want to make it extra complicated because then I got to have somebody that knows how to run a board because I can't do it all. You know, I'm, while we're playing live, I'm trying to watch comments also because, you know, I don't know. I have to pay attention to the comments because at any instant, everything can go in the toilet and you, nobody can hear anything or, you know, and so I have to watch comments, you know. But anyway, so the point is, I, you know, I just want to solve it simple. I can definitely solve it complicated, no question about it. And, you know, I ran a sound studio, a, a recording studio for, I don't know, at least a dozen years, probably longer than that, and uh, had some pretty major accomplishments, as I've told you. I've had stuff appear on PBS and on, uh, and on uh, public radio, what is that called? <laughs> NPR? Yeah. I've had, so I've done some pretty major things in my recording studio. I, I'm no slouch to understanding it. I just don't want to do it that way. Genie. Well, no, we've already solved the problem, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> uh, I know some of these are delayed as they come in, too. Charlie Rostern, have you heard of Ear Trumpet Labs? Uh, yeah, I have. I They make microphones specifically for ensemble playing. Yeah, I saw those. Um... They're very expensive, for one thing. They're like $1,200, $1,300. I was looking at the price, and I'm not into that either. So, I mean, I would probably spend that if, if I knew for sure it would fix the problem, but I'm not going to spend it on a, on a maybe or work. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and we're going... I, right now, I just have a USB mic. That's what this is. It just plugs into a USB port, just like on your laptop or your tablet or, you know, a USB thing on your phone. It's That's all it is. It's just a USB mic plugged in. And um, I think that eventually I'll find a way to make it work better. I'm not expecting perfection. I don't don't expect it. I'm not even trying to get perfection. I'm just trying to get it where it's reasonable. 
And I think, I think the next time I'm just going to raise this up like we were talking about, and, and I think either Dottie or somebody else mentioned, and I'm going to raise it up and I'm going to uh, turn it on the full circle pattern, I think, the next time. I, I never turned it on the circle pattern before because there's people out there sometimes and they're talking and things and, you know, but I think I will just turn it on the full circle pattern next time and see how that works. I think that'll actually help. Um, <clears throat> so Peter Lovick says the Zoom uh, H6 is just a mic to USB. Well, I'll look at that again and see if that looks like that would be something that might help. You know, it has to have a large diaphragm, though. If it's, if it is, if it's not, if it's a small little mic, it isn't going to pick up everything. It just doesn't work that way. Um, I don't know anything about this H6 thing, but I'll look at it. It's 280 bucks. Yeah, I don't mind spending a few hundred bucks. That's not that big a deal. I... Money grows on trees. <laughs> okay, well, at least we solved the name issue. Her name was Jenny Vaughn. And uh, anyway, uh, she's married and got kids now, and I don't think any of them play music. In fact, unfortunately, I think there was issues, and I think they all just split up and quit playing. <clears throat> ben Boyd, for the record... About 50% of the members of the Martin Owners Facebook group agreed with you on the humidifier question and who knew you, many did, commented that they love your channel. Well, that's very nice to hear. I, that's very nice to hear because typically on forums it don't go that way. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you go into a forum. Uh, you know, I, I made that mistake years and years and years ago. I, it's been a long time ago. Um, but you know, I went in, got in on a forum or two and, uh, you know, just tried to give an alternate idea, not really wasn't trying to push anything particular, you know, and they just eat you alive. Like you're just stupid. And I go, okay, fine. Let's, we'll see you later. Thanks. Thanks for helping. <laughs> I just, I don't, I'm not big on forums mostly. And, and I've had other people come on my channel and different things and send me emails and say, do you know what they're saying about you out there on the Mandolin Cafe? And do you know what they're saying about you on the XYZ and whatever? And I'm going, yeah, it's fine. Whatever they want to say is just fine. Just let them knock themselves out. I don't really care. And that's the truth. I, if you, you know, if you want to be, you know, hard-nosed about everything and think that you're, you are the only one that has an opinion and uh, you're always right, well, that's fine. I generally tell you like I see it. And I also tell you, you know, the alternatives and sometimes alternatives are the better choice. I mean, like I said, on humidity, if you want to humidify your instrument, probably won't hurt anything as long as you don't overdo it. Overdoing it is far worse than underdoing it. I will tell you that for sure. That is for sure. Okay. Many trolls on the different forums. Yeah, and but I found it was actually the people that, you know, there's usually one or two main guys on a forum. And if you say anything that slightly contradicts one of the main guys, you're in trouble. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Okay, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> I probably already made a bunch more people mad. I, you know, I'm really good at that, actually. Uh, 164 viewers. <laughs> so thanks, guys. We will. I'll try to get a video out over the weekend. I'm making making no promises, but I'm going to try. And uh, if nothing else, I'll see you by Monday for sure. Y'all have a great one. <laughs>